Japan, the United States and South Korea is scheduled to have talks to discuss North Korea's recent test launch of intercontinental ballistic missile. Let's find out more from Ria Saito. Following North Korea's launching of its intercontinental ballistic missile, senior officials from the United States, South Korea and Japan are scheduled to meet and tackle measures on how to counter North Korea's recent missile test launch. The planned talks were made by the U.S. State Department and announced Monday following North Korea's latest provocation by launching its first solid fuel intercontinental ballistic missile, the Hwasong-18. The meeting that will be held on Thursday in Karuizawa, southeastern part of Nagano Prefecture, that will be attended by senior officials from Japan's Foreign Ministries, Asian and Oceanian Affairs Bureau, Funakoshi Takehiro, U.S. Special Representative for North Korea, Ambassador Sung Kim, and Special Representative for Korean Peninsula. Peace and Security Affairs Kim Gun. It can be remembered last Wednesday, July 12th, North Korea had its test launch of Hwasong-18 that fell into the sea 250 kilometers west of Okushiri Island, Japan's northernmost main island of Hokkaido. The talks will be chiefly about how to respond to North Korea's series of missile test launch. Since the three leaders are concerned, thus North Korea will likely conduct more missile launches and its seventh nuclear test. It can be noted that according to North Korea state-run media, the Korean Central News Agency or KCNA, Kim Yo-jung, Kim Jong-un's sister issued a statement Monday stating that the launch last week of what the U.S. witnessed was just the beginning of North Korea's already launched military offensive. America's bilateral relations with Israel continues to go down the drain with former Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid warning that his country's relations with the U.S. have deteriorated so much under the leadership of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Jean Domingo reports. The United States is no longer Israel's closest ally. This was said by Israeli opposition leader and former Prime Minister Yair Lapid on Monday at a faction meeting of the Siesh Atid party. Lapid argued that the government of Netanyahu is destroying the alliance with the United States by trying to pass controversial judicial reforms. In an interview with the Israeli media, Lapid said, and quote, the Americans say they have no shared values with this government. It affects every aspect of U.S.-Israel relations, their attention and their willingness to leave their comfort zone for Israeli interest. They will not do it for the most extreme government in the history of the country. End of quote. Netanyahu has spent 12 years as the Prime Minister of Israel. But in June 2021, a coalition led by Lapid ousted Netanyahu from his position. He later returned as the Prime Minister of Israel after winning the December 2022 election. Meanwhile, in late March, U.S. President Joe Biden raised concerns about the democracy of Israel over months of protests due to the proposed judicial reforms. Biden said, and quote, like many strong supporters of Israel, I'm very concerned. I'm concerned that they get this straight. They cannot continue down this road. Netanyahu won't be invited to the White House in the near term. End of quote. However, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu responded to Biden, saying that Israel is a sovereign country and makes decisions by the will of its people and not based on pressures from abroad, including from the best of friends. Israeli National Security Minister Itamar Ben-Gvir also blasted Biden, saying that the U.S. president needs to understand and that he expects Biden to understand that Israel is no longer a star on the American flag and that Israel is a democratic country. It can be remembered that on Monday, Biden invited Netanyahu to visit the White House later this year. This comes after the American government criticized West Jerusalem's approval for a Jewish-only settlement in the West Bank. Biden's recent invitation also comes after he criticized the Israeli government's cabinet by calling them a part of the problem in the Palestinian conflict. Reporting for Newsline World, this has been Jean Domingo, SMI News.
Russian President Vladimir Putin made a chilling warning following the arrival of cluster munitions sent by the, by the United States to Ukraine. Carlo de la Peña for the details. American officials recently confirmed that cluster munitions provided by their country have already arrived in Ukraine amid opposition from international organizations, allies and NATO member states. To this, Russian President Vladimir Putin warned that if Ukraine uses such weapons on the battlefield, then his country reserves the right to retaliate in kind. Putin said the U.S. administration itself gave an assessment of these munitions through the mouths of its employees some time ago, calling the use of these munitions a crime. The Russian president believes cluster munitions should be regarded. Putin is likely referring to a statement made by ex-White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki in February 2022. There are reports of illegal cluster bombs and vacuum bombs being used by the Russians. Uh, if that's true, what is the next step of this administration and is there a red line for how much violence uh, will be tolerated against civilians in this manner that's illegal and potentially a war crime? It is. It would be. I don't have any confirmation of that. We have seen the reports. Uh, if, if that were true, it would potentially be a war crime. Meanwhile, Putin said his country has huge stockpiles of various types of such weapons and so far he has not used them despite the shortage of ammunition at certain points. Putin's claim of not yet using cluster munitions is in contrast to some international organizations claiming that both Russia and Ukraine are using the controversial weapons since the conflict broke out in February 2022. Meanwhile, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu on July 11th warned that Russian cluster munitions are much more effective than American ones, as their range is broader and more diverse. It can be remembered that U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan rejected criticisms over the controversial weapons, saying that Washington retains its moral authority by providing cluster munitions for Ukraine. Meanwhile, earlier this month, U.S. President Joe Biden in a CNN interview suggested that the U.S. and Ukraine had shortages of ammo. That's why America decided to provide cluster munitions. The controversial weapons are banned in more than 100 countries due to the risk they pose to civilians because some of the bomblets it releases fail to detonate. According to Amnesty International, over 86,500 civilians have been killed by cluster munitions since World War II. Reporting, this has been Carlo de la Peña, SMNI News.